Hey everybody, what is going on? Today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can put a computer, a full computer, in your car for under $100. So, uh, what I'm going to show you right now is all the you know, stuff that's really required for this, as well as some of the stuff that's not necessarily required but might be fun to have. And uh, really the only thing that I can't show you right now, because it's in my car, is uh, one of the cables, but we'll get to that. So, I've got everything laid out here, so I'm just going to point the, uh, the uh, camera down and show you what we got going on. So, so here we have, uh, we've got the screen here. Um, this screen is like $17 or something on Amazon. It's a composite screen. Um, the Raspberry Pi Model B has a direct composite plug. I'm told that uh, the B, Model B Plus, uh, I want to say it was the audio cable, uh, the audio port is also a composite port. Um, someone can, can post below and let me know. Uh, I've only done this with the Model B, so if you have a Model B Plus, you'll have to look into that because any of the HDMI uh, screens are like $60 at least. Um, that's obviously uh, quite quite a bit different than like a $17 screen. So uh, so that's the screen that we're using. It does come with like 3M tape, so you could peel this off and go ahead, stick it on your dash. Um, I wouldn't recommend that. I have been uh, I've been toying around with this for a while, and chances are on the first stick, you're you're not going to really know that that's where you want it to be. So what I did is I got like a 3M tape in Velcro, right? So 3M Velcro, and with that you can you know put it on both sides, stick it. But then if you ever need to remove it for whatever reason, you sure can. So at least for me, um, I found that. Uh, the best place for my monitor, because uh, this is, I guess I call this a monitor, the best place for the screen is like to the back left on my dash. And, um, or you could also buy one of those little fancy head units too, like that, like have a screen on it and it, or like a pop out screen. Those are like 200 plus dollars. And there's some cheaper ones, but they re they like break so easily. So I just feel like, you know, let's go ahead and just have a cheap screen and, and, and you know, forfeit maybe $17 if it goes bad rather than, you know, 80 bucks or 200 or whatever. So anyway, um, there are, that is an option, but anyways, this just goes on my dash and it goes, you know, kind of tucked into the left hand side, but that's also where I'm feeding all of my wires. So if I ever needed to rewire for some reason, um, you need to be able to remove the screen. So anyway, uh, back to all the parts now, um, let's do this. So that's the screen. It's a composite screen. Um, this basically it comes, and you got all these cables. You're going to need your own uh, composite and your own power. So it basically comes just this stuff is connected to the um, the screen, but you'll need to get your own power supply and all of that. Um, if you're using a car, you're going to use their power supply though. They do have it does come with a power supply with a positive and negative lead. So then you can use that, and you can connect that to your um, the app or, or the uh, I'm trying to think of what the proper term is for this, but there's like a, a specific accessories slot for most cars, and you'll just uh, wire that to the accessories slot. Um, otherwise, you can of course you can wire it to just about anything. You can wire it to because the screen can you know turn on and off with the car's ignition no problem. So you can wire it to your cigarette lighter, or you can wire it to. Um, some people do like the overhead light. You could wire it to that. Anything like that, you can wire it to. So next up, um, obviously I've got a Raspberry Pi. I do have a case. This case is not a case that everyone's going to want. But what I like about this case, it's a Raspberry Pi camera case as well. And so if you can't see, uh, that's a Raspberry Pi camera in there. And then obviously the Raspberry Pi is in here. So this sits on my dash, the, the actual Raspberry Pi. And then the camera faces out on the dash. So I pretty much have a constant you know, camera on the car. Then, um, so that's that. It'll be a big hit with the Russians. I don't know if y'all are familiar, but pretty much every Russian or a ton of Russians drive around constant camera because it's crazy over there. Um, the next thing I have here is this USB hub. Chances are you're going to have a lot more peripherals than you think. And so like if you want to have, like for me, I've got this Wi-Fi adapter here. So that gives me Wi-Fi and then I've got the USB hub and then that gives me the mouse and a keyboard. Now you obviously don't need a mouse and a keyboard, and ideally you, you won't have those, um, but there might be times where you do. And so this is the keyboard I have. It's actually a flimsy keyboard, right? It's a foldable keyboard. So that's really helpful uh, for portability. I had intentions of putting that, uh, putting it on my dashboard, um, but my dashboard, on the dash of my car. 
Um, but it doesn't stick to anything. Like it's a plastic and nothing sticks to it. No glue, no duct tape, no nothing. Like nothing will stick to this. But that's okay. You don't really need a keyboard there. Uh, ideally, the, well, the computer is just displaying stats or doing other things for you that we'll talk about in a minute. So that's a keyboard and then obviously a wireless mouse um, that you can have. Now let's get to the really uh, important stuff. So my intention or, you know, like what, you know, what might you actually use a computer in your car for? So um, for me, uh, one is for the camera. I wanted to have a camera and then also put the camera on like a, a loop, you know, so every 24 hours it just recycles stuff. Uh, so a looped camera would be cool, but also I want to plug it into my car's uh, onboard computer. So to do that, you need an OBD2 cable, and you just need a USB OBD2 cable, and then you can plug that into your Pi and use Pi OBD and get your OBD stats. Uh, the other cool thing that you can think about doing, so with the OBD, by the way, you can get things like uh, like your RPM, which of course you probably have on your dash already, but your RPM like throttle position, uh, you can pick up your um, check engine light codes, clear those, all that kind of fun stuff. There's all kinds of stats that you can get uh, from your car's computer that aren't just immediately available to you. So you can get that, that's probably the main reason I got it. Um, I like wanted to do the onboard computer. And then also you can do things, obviously you can record things, um, but you can also do things like uh, remote start. If you have the Raspberry Pi in your car, you can connect it to your ignition and do remote start. You can also do something as cool as like um, like voice start. You know, like you could literally be like car start and the car starts. So that'd be kind of cool. So my car, it's a, uh, an S2000. So I actually have a push to start button. So most of the work for actually doing a voice start is done for me. So hopefully I'll be able to do that and show you guys a pretty awesome video on that as well. So then finally, um, how do we, the, the main issue with putting a Raspberry Pi in your car is that when you turn on and off the ignition, it just cuts power immediately. And obviously that's a bad thing. So how do we overcome that? And to do that, we use MCM electronics. So let me do this. And I actually, I bought like one of every single switch they have. They've got a bunch of switches on there for the Raspberry Pi. And the idea of these switches is you flick the switch and it sends a signal to the, uh, your IO pins, runs a quick little script that is basically constantly checking for the switch flipped and will shut down your Raspberry Pi based on the switch. So we've got some rocker switches. These two are rocker switches. Uh, this one is just if you have your own switch and then this one is a cool little power button I just really liked it and it like glows blue so cool But those are all only useful if you have constant power So what do you use if you have a car? Well, they sell car switches as well So as soon as I can untangle this from this mess So this is a car switch and this is their 3 amp car switch So again, uh, this is the cables to shut down and it stores uh, this is 3 amps so this will store three amps and um, this connects basically to what I was describing before. You'll have this connected to your accessory slot basically. Um, and that way it only turns on and off like with your car's ignition. You could also do like you could connect it to your cigarette lighter if you wanted. Like if you've already, like if you have a, a radar detector, let's say, and you've hardwired your radar detector, you're, you might not have another slot. So you could, you know, you could connect it even with your radar detector or you could splice into that or your cigarette lighter or whatever. So that's this, and it also has two USB ports, so you could power uh, like up to two Pis on this thing. Um, and um, but really, you're probably just going to power one Pi, but you can actually work these in and send the signals between the Pis. But anyway, um, I'm just going to use it for one Pi for now. So you have this, you hardwire this. That way, uh, when you turn off the ignition, it still has power because it's three amps and it will send the shutdown signal to your Raspberry Pi, shut it down, and your everything's good, and then when you start your car back up again, it'll start up. So finally, um, on the Raspberry Pi itself, um, not too many people are aware of it, but you actually can, like right now I'm, I'm at you know the you know, command line, but obviously I have to type start x, uh oh, I got myself lost here, start, why is it, let's see, start x, there we go, for some reason I kept hitting the space key. Um, so you can start the desktop and actually you can automatically start the desktop and you can also edit your config file and auto start anything. So you can auto start all kinds of scripts. So you could start auto start your OBD script, let's say, um, and all kinds of stuff like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and do is show you guys in the car. So this is all kind of extra stuff. I just so happened to, um, 
have a purchasing problem? No. <laughs> I actually bought two of these screens. I bought a bunch of these switches. The other good thing to have, uh, I meant to show you guys, are these things. What is this? This is an, a USB extension cord. It's 15 feet. And it's very useful uh, because you can run that for any other, you know, same reason you might want an extension cord. You can run that through your car and uh, put stuff where you want it to be. So like this USB hub, um, I really want that kind of in the back so there's not a bunch of cords in the front, but the computer is going to be in the front. So I'm going to run the USB cord to the back, and that's where I plan to put the USB hub. Anyway, um, it looks to me like this is really bright to you guys. It's not that bright. It's just probably the camera to the camera. But anyway, yeah, a lot of really exciting things because you can put a computer in your car, um, and then you've got, you know, like the camera, you can add the sensors and all that. You can also add, like, gyro sensors to the Pi, and then I'll get that stuff. So I, actually, I take my car to the track, like a road course, and to get anything comparable to this, like, I spent Pi in total and all this stuff, plus a gyro sensor, like, still, like, less than $100 on all this stuff. And to get something even close to this, minus the camera, well, actually, if we include the camera, I went over $100, but to get something similar to that, it costs about $1,000. <laughs> so to do it yourself is, like, way cheaper anyway. Plus, you have a computer in your car, so you're pretty much de facto the, one of the coolest people on the road. So anyways, um, now let's, let's actually see it in the car. All right, the Raspberry Pi computer car. So here is my... Car. And over here, you don't have to, wow, that's a blinding sun. Anyway, you can see now over on the left hand side of the dash there, that's where the uh, computer screen is. So let me pop over there. One more. That's what y'all came to see, right? Okay, so there you can see uh, is the actual screen here. Now, like I was saying, that's actually a really cheap screen. I think it was like $18 or something, so definitely worth it. Um, and then over here is probably easier to see the Pi. Uh, the yellow thing is the USB hub. And there is the Pi behind the stickers and all of that. I've kind of got it hidden and tucked away. Um, there's a couple options there. You, you know, you could put it somewhere like on, in the dash and hide the Pi completely. But the Pi does get hot, especially if you've got a lot of peripherals. So I thought the best ventilation um, would be right out, out there. But... Uh, where it is, really, I don't even see it, you know, because the stickers are in the way. So I'm not really losing anything by having it up there. So let's go inside real quick. Uh, so wait a second, and the Pi should come on. Uh, the screen itself is actually hooked up to um, the accessory slot on the fuse box. So there's all the random uh, Pi stuff. So the screen is just hooked up there, and then the Pi itself is hooked up with a switch from Mosbury Circuits. And what the switch does is a 3 amp switch, so the switch itself uh, will have like a, a residual charge to it. And then when you shut down, uh, the switch itself will sense when there's no more power coming to the switch, and it will then issue a shutdown to the Raspberry Pi, which is quite nice. Uh, that way, you don't corrupt the SD card when you shut down. So there's the Pi and all that. I could show you um, maybe some of the OBD stuff. Uh, real quick, if you'd like, although no one, no one gets to answer me anyway, so because <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Let's see if I can bring this into a better focus. And uh, if you didn't notice, we went straight to desktop. You can do all kinds of startup stuff. Starting up to desktop is just an option in Raspberry Options or Raspberry Config rather. <laughs> anyway, so this is like the OBD thing. It's going to pull up. Um, it's connecting to the serial port. So I've got an OBD cable. It's an OBD2 cable connected. So this is pulling data from the car's computer uh, as soon as it comes up. So there's a little bit of data. You can also navigate the data by uh, either your arrows or your uh, mouse button. Um, so there we go. We've got engine RPM. You've got throttle position. So I'll push in my throttle here. And you can see that the throttle position is now 88.63. So that's pretty cool. Um, intake air temp, 177. That's still pretty hot because I just actually drove it. Um, so, yeah, that's a good thing. The engine RPM in miles per hour is zero. That's good to know. <laughs> Not crashing through my garage. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's it with the, uh, with the Raspberry Pi in the car. Pretty cool. I'm really happy with it. Um, 
so I encourage you to definitely definitely try it out. There's a lot of other things that we can do once we have a computer in the car, as you might imagine. So um, I definitely I want to upgrade this. I'm not. I mean, this is a cool cool application. I will put a link to it in the description. Um, but there's a few. Uh, I'd like to kind of change it up. I'd like to have like a live graph of probably at least throttle position, and um, then I'd like to add a sensor to my brake so I can get throttle and brake position, and then engine RPM. Obviously, we want. Um, so that's kind of cool, and um, but I'd like to have that a little more live than this is. But this is actually still a pretty cool application. But yeah, so maybe if I develop that, I'll put out another video for that as well. But for now, this is all that uh, this will do. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, maybe I forgot to mention something, uh, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. Sorry for uh, the bad sound. I don't have my mic out here. <laughs> Anyway, until next time.